Um, do you want to have some questions? We have ten, a few minutes. We have some minutes for questions, if you have any. Yes, sir. There's two of you there, side by side. Go ahead. Yes, I think so. I think he, he came to realize he was close to the Fairfaxes, uh, who were English gentry and a good step above him. And I think he uh, took his clue. His, yeah, as you know, his father died, as Jefferson's father did, uh, while he was a teenager. He admired his brother, uh, and he had that military uh, object. Uh, for, but I think the Fairfax model was crucial. He knew what it was to be, I mean, he taught himself he wants to be a distinguished gentleman who is as learned as they are or acts in the right way. He, he read enormously. His, we've often thought of him as not uh, equal to Jefferson and Adams, and it's true that he, he didn't have their intellectual depth, but he certainly was a learned man, and he read uh, copiously. And I think it is a desire to, to be at the highest levels. Now, he didn't acquire, I mean, his marriage to Martha is what catapults him into the, he, he needed the finances uh, of Martha's uh, dowry to catapult him into the highest levels of the Virginia aristocracy. And, and of course, he becomes one of the richest men in, in the country as a result of that, that marriage. Yes, sir, right next, yeah. Uh, so if I uh, understood it correctly, I think you um, indicated that Adam felt he was intellectually superior to Washington. Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, but how aware was Washington of that, uh, Adam's opinion of him, and what did he think of Adam's? Uh, that's a good question. He, he's very cautious. I think his relationship with Adams was very good. Uh, the, his vice president was correct and appropriate. Adams, he didn't, um, he didn't really consult Adams a lot, and Adams saw himself, you know, he's the one who made uh, the comment that I'm in the, the, the most nothing office that man ever could have conceived of. Uh, Adams saw his role as president of the Senate. Curiously, he didn't see himself as part of the executive. He was a good Federalist, but he's, a, he's the president of the Senate, and he engages in debate with the senators. So I think he saw himself in that way. Uh, Washington, as far as I know, made no derogatory comments about Adams uh, in any of his, he was uh, correct and, and it would have been very inappropriate for him to do so. Maybe privately he said things that never appeared, but he didn't, certainly didn't write anything that showed uh, any uh, contempt or, or dislike of, of John Adams. Adams' comments, uh, of course, uh, are much franker after Washington's death when he's writing to Benjamin Rush, the correspondence between Rush and Adams is one of those great correspondences uh, rivaling those between Adams and, and Jefferson in their frankness and in their, uh, in their vividness. Um, he, the two of them exchange ideas about Washington, that his aides wrote all of his letters and that he had no, no independent thought whatsoever and so on, those kinds of rumors that had spread that Hamilton and, and his other uh, aides uh, did all of the uh, did all of the writing. Obviously, his aides did write a lot of stuff for him, but there's no doubt that Washington, on crucial letters, that they were his letters. Uh, they, of course, a commander in chief has an enormous amount of correspondence to deal with, and there's no doubt he had other people doing some of that routine correspondence. But I think he was, their relationship was correct. Let's put it that way. And, and after his death, Adams makes the statements uh, that he does. Uh, most of them. Th he was very jealous of Washington, although he continued to respect him. He was just jealous. He has long letters on, on the concept of disinterestedness, interestingly enough. Two long, big letters, Adams does, because he knew that's what Washington was famous for, and he, he queries it, he questions it. A lot of it had to do with whether, he, you know, Washington served as commander in chief without salary. That was what an aristocrat was supposed to do. Members of the House of Commons did not get paid until 1911. If you're an aristocrat, you just, you don't go into public office and expect a salary. 
I don't know if you remember, in the Constitutional Convention, Benjamin Franklin, it's curious it should come from him, but he makes one of, one of his major proposals, perhaps his most ma famous proposal, is that all members of the executive branch, from the president on down, should serve without pay. Well, Madison <laughs> writes in his uh, notes, he said it was a long pause. And then somebody tabled the motion. As you know, tabling is a way of getting it off. The, just don't, well, this is not something we want to vote on. Uh, but Franklin believed that. He thought that that's where you get a truly disinterested leader. But of course, it would, would have meant that you would have had only rich people serving in office. But that was the, that was the cost. That's how the England got through the 19th century. Uh, the, the businessmen, the manufacturers, and so on left it to the landed gentry to run politics. As long as they left them alone and to make money, they said, you guys can, if you've read your trollop, you know that it's the landed aristocracy that runs the, and they're not making any, they're not having any salaries paid. And Adam Smith said that. They are the ideal leaders because their money comes to them without exertion, the landed gentry, rents from tenants, comes to them without exertion. That is to say they're not engaged in the marketplace. Uh, and, and so they make ideal leaders. They could be disinterested more easily than someone who is a merchant. Adam Smith says you can't trust merchants because they're out to make money. So uh, that, that, was, that was an issue, and Adams takes that on. He says, how can we have a republic where we don't pay people? Because he didn't have that kind of wealth. And so he argues for being paid, and therefore he, gets, he has this long essay on disinterestedness, two, two letters dealing with that. He's very angry about the whole notion that he should be serving without pay, that he should. He didn't. They, uh, our offices all were paid. It was a realization, and this goes back to an issue I was talking with some of you about, were, were these real aristocrats in America? Well, uh, there are some that could serve without pay. Washington certainly could, and Franklin could, but most of them could not. They didn't have the wherewithal to, to do that. So we were very different in that respect from the English.